Sri Gribyo Namaha. Welcome to our online learning initiative and I welcome you all for the science class. We manufacture things and we export to different places. When we are in need of things, we import from different places. For this exchange of goods, we need a special system called transport system. Yes, like a roadways, railways, airways, etc. Likewise, in our body, the food get digested in one particular area. It has to be transported to all parts of the body, number one. Number two, we inhale oxygen and this oxygen has to reach all parts of the body, right? And number three, some toxic gases get collected like carbon dioxide and it has to be exhaled out. Yes, so for all these things, we need a special system called transportation system. Transport system in our body, if you see, we are going to deal with this three area only. Number one, the pumping organ. Number two, the blood. And then blood vessels. Yes, so we see transportation system in our body. So here fluids. First, we'll talk about the fluid. The body fluid we are going to categorize into two. Okay, now the first one will be the intracellular fluid. Okay, the fluid which is seen in the cell. Number two, if you see, that will be the extracellular fluid outside the cell, like blood and a lymph. You can see here, blood and a lymph. Yes. So, as I said in the previous thing, the three major things what we are going to deal. Number one, heart, then blood and blood vessels. So first we'll talk about blood. So what is the nature of the blood? What is a blood? It is a special connective tissue. About five liters of blood circulates in the body of an adult person. It consists of a watery fluid with a composition of different things like formed elements and plasma. Plasma composition, if you see, it is 55 percentage. And formed elements, the floating objects, are nothing but RBC. WBC and platelets. It is slightly alkaline in nature because its pH range is 7.4. pH 7 neutral. Below 7 it is acidic. Above 7 it is alkaline. Since it is 7.4 it is alkaline in nature. It is a fluid connective tissue. Yeah. And it provides the body cells with oxygen and removes carbon dioxide. Okay, it is called as toxic gas for our body. Blood transports nutrients and hormones. Again, the important thing, okay, what it transports nutrients and hormones. It also regulates the body temperature, that's why we call it as homeothermic. Blood brings waste products to the kidney and liver for excretion. So first we will see about the components, okay? In the beginning we have cl classified the composition if you see, it has plasma and formed elements. The same thing we are seeing with the picture here. Yes, so the major composition, plasma, the remaining formed elements are nothing but RBC, WBC and platelets. So first we'll speak about plasma. So plasma in blood composition if you see, Okay, it is somewhat straw colored liquid. Okay, that's why yellowish liquid we call it as. Okay, it holds the blood cells also. Okay, that we call it as formed elements. It is a liquid part of the blood that carries cells. That's what the formed elements and the proteins throughout the body. The composition is 55 percentage. Make a note, one mark question it is. Yes, what is the composition of plasma in blood? 55 percentage. Next, we are going to classify the blood cells. The blood cells can be classified into three. RBC, WBC and platelets. You can see here, RBC, otherwise called as erythrocytes. I'll write it. erythrocytes 
okay wbc leukocytes okay platelets thrombocytes one after the other we'll see first we are going to deal with rbc yes you can see wbc further classified into two so what are they depending upon the granules if the granules are present is granulocytes if it's not there a granulocytes it's totally five types of wbc cells are there so under this granulocytes we have three subdivisions eosinophil basophil and neutrophil under non granulocytes or a granulocytes we have two subdivisions monocytes and lymphocytes so first we'll speak about rbc otherwise called as erythrocytes so this is the rbc cell it is how it is looking like biconcave disc shape yes and it is enucleated no nucleus absent of nu absence of nucleus it has a pigment called hemoglobin about 33 percentage the iron found in hemoglobin gives red color blood is red in color because of this pigmentation the life span 120 days the number count if you take it 4 million new erythrocytes are produced per second in human adult okay this one is how much it is originating okay and if you see the number per millimeter cube okay this is a count of rbc it's a normal blood count okay rbc count in blood rbc count 4.3 to 5.9 million per millimeter cube okay they are talking about a particular composition and then here 3.5 to 5.5 million per millimeter cube wbc you can see the wbc cells so how many types of wbc cells are there five types of wbc cells it is it account for only about 1 percentage of the blood but its work is more okay and the count if you see 4500 to 11000 per millimeter cube they are the cells that make up the majority of the immune system okay uh, we will be speaking about t cells and b cells okay which plays a major role in immunity they are nothing but the lymphocytes okay one of the wbc cells it is a part of the body that protect itself against foreign substances and various infection okay immune cells also we can say they are made in the bone marrow origin from where the classification of the five types of wbc cells with the picture you can see and inside with nucleus they are with nucleus rbc without nucleus and here it is with nucleus so you can see monocytes eosinophil basophil lymphocytes neutrophil so what are the functions of wbc according to their granulocytes and a granulocytes first neutrophils it kills the bacteria acts the process called phagocytosis it's nothing but cell eating process okay eosinophil it kills parasites allergic reaction basophil they contain histamine okay the substance which dilate the vessel okay so that more immune cells in case of injury if any one particular area that is a cut okay in that place more histamine secretion will be there it's a type of basophils helps in immunity it kills the germs again okay all these thing if you see what is the basic nature killing nature killing what the foreign substances like bacteria virus etc uh next we'll talk about a granulocytes lymphocytes i said here we are going to talk about two lymphocytes one is b lymphocytes another one t lymphocytes in simple we call it as b cell and t cell they can recognize and have a memory see memory okay that is why some infection once we get will not be prone to another time like chicken pox all when we our body is well immunized okay with the chicken pox we may not get again okay because of these memory cells in t group process yes the function is destroying cancer cell here they are given only one function there are many functions monocytes enters the tissue where they become larger and turn into macrophage okay again we call this process phagocytosis process cell eating it go engulf the food and digest the food 
okay for them who is the food bacteria virus right destroy old damaged and dead cells in the body our own cells also okay dead cells okay when it happened to be of no use okay that particular cell will be destroyed and that will be digested by this monocytes when these dead cells are more in our body it may also cause infection so it's like natural immunity for our own body the next we'll talk about platelets otherwise called as thrombocytes so this is the structure of platelets helps in coagulation okay clotting nucleus is absent here okay the other term for platelets thrombocytes do not reproduce so no replication because no nucleus small fragments of bone marrow cells okay the origination and the count if you see 1 lakh 50000 to 4 lakh okay normal platelet count it is so what is the function of platelets the platelets are the part of the cell that the body uses for clotting otherwise called as coagulation okay blood has to clot when there is a cut when the blood is flowing out it should clot okay if there is no clotting process it is called as bleeders disease or hemophilia it helps to promote other blood clotting mechanism okay we have around 13 clotting factors in our body 13 clotting factors okay a trigger and they have will have a cascade mechanism for the clotting to stop the blood flow when there is a cut there are two types of bleeding internal bleeding and external bleeding internal due to cut in the blood vessels they secrete chemicals that attract how the process takes place they attract the neutrophil and monocytes to the site of inflammation these thing like a web it forms if there is a cut okay these things like a web it forms and it clots okay it also pull who neutrophils and the monocytes also so they are all nothing but part of wbc gives immunity protection if there is any germ okay any germ cells are there it will destroy those cells it dissolve blood clots when they are no longer needed even this function also can be done by the monocytes not only killing the germs even the clot will get dissolved because of this monocyte and neutrophil we saw our own dead cells they can digest and digest and destroy bacteria also next we'll move to blood vessels blood vessels okay you can see it is a somewhat tube like structure right so there are two major vessels one is artery another one vein okay this is the two these are the two major blood vessels the largest vein called as vena cava and the largest artery called as aorta and these one okay they bifurcate further and further and they become into small tubule like structure and that you call it as capillaries and these capillaries are two cell in thickness very tiny okay that's why we will we'll, here thickness how we will measure depending upon the layer here like two cell thickness it is very thin and minute it is what capillaries so we we'll first we'll start about arteries the arteries are the blood vessels that deliver oxygen rich blood from the heart to the tissue okay each artery is a muscular tube so what it is made up of if this is the artery okay if you see the layer of the artery it has three layer okay expand this layer and observe okay that first layer 1 2 3 like this three layers it has so outer you call it as tunica externa middle you call it as tunica media inner you call it as tunica intima like this three layer you can number it 1 2 3 okay so tunica interna tunica media tunica externa externa outside yes this is structure of arteries what's the function of arteries they carry the blood away from the heart or towards the heart they carry the blood from the heart okay away from the heart to different parts of the body the arteries are deep seated 
okay they are not superficial if you see vein veins are superficial but these arteries are deep seated because they take the blood they carry the blood with high pressure they do not have valves okay they are thick and muscular in nature the blood flows very fast okay with great pressure okay that is why it is deep seated that's a reason like reasoning type question might be two marks yes except the pulmonary artery all the arteries carry oxygenated blood in differences make a note what are the differences between artery and vein in that you have to specify pulmonary artery okay the artery which runs from the lungs okay that's the only artery which carry oxygenated blood veins they are elastic yeah they are elastic blood vessels transports blood from various region of the body to the heart so vein is the vessel okay which carry the blood towards the heart veins are components of cardiovascular system which circulates blood to provide nutrient to the cells of the body okay cell level we are talking here functions veins bring back blood from different parts of the body to the heart okay that's why in the beginning uh, uh, we say the we said the pathway okay what is the pathway of the artery and vein artery carry the blood away from the heart vein carry the blood towards the heart they are superficial that's now i showed it is superficial because it takes the blood or carry the blood with little low pressure compared to artery veins have valves you can see it has valves why it is having a valve to prevent the back flow of the blood okay if this is the structure of vein okay if this is the structure of the vein they have a valve like this this you call it as valve okay and this valve which prevents the back flow of the blood because when the blood is moving against the gravity it should not come back so this valve helps the flow of blood in vein is not so fast because the blood in vein is under low pressure which is under high pressure arteries okay artery carry the blood with high pressure except pulmonary vein all the veins carry deoxygenated blood yes the tiny vessels okay like a web connecting between the artery and vein it's nothing but capillaries structure of the capillary if you see i said it is very very thin okay around 5 micrometer in diameter composed of two layers of cell that's why i said two cell thickness inner endothelial cell outer epithelial cells the two cell thickness okay they are so small that rbc need to flow through them in a single file okay that much okay in a single row only it has to go that much thin it is the capillary what is the function of capillary exchange of gases nutrients and waste between the blood and tissue very important make a note it is it is a one mark question function of capillary capillaries are tiny vessels that branch out from arterioles to form a network around body cells okay in the lungs capillaries absorb oxygen from the inhaled air into the blood stream and release carbon dioxide for exhalation okay it is very important in lungs if you see okay alveoli if this is the alveoli or alveolar sac it will be richly supplied with the capillaries like this okay a network of capillary will be seen okay exchange of gases takes place because of this also we can say yes so next class we'll see about the heart function thank you